Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode, as promised, I'm going to start off by trying to fulfill this contract to achieve orbit around MIMIS, to transmit or recover scientific data from space around MIMIS, to land on MIMIS, and then to transfer, uh, transmit or recover scientific data from the surface. So I think that'll probably be uh, take up the whole episode, but uh, we'll see. Uh, in any case, I am just going to use the Moon Explorer 1 since it worked so well in the previous episode. And the only change I want to make is some solar panels. Um, trying to find optimal locations for these. It's conceivable that I could actually bring this back because it takes so little to land on Minmus. Minmus is a tiny little moon. And whereas I estimated for landing on the moon uh, about 800 delta V, 800 meters per second. Landing on Mimis takes about 300. Uh, so it's not as much. I mean, and 300 is overestimation. So it takes less than 300 to land on Mimis. And so it could be possible to then take off again, which takes about another 300. And then to transfer back to Kerbin, which takes about 250. So, uh, but I'm not going to go with that just yet. We were pretty tight on the margins to the moon, and I'd have to slap on a parachute if I wanted to bring this back. So the mass, mass situation would be different, and the delta V situation would be different. And so I don't think I have quite the margins for it, but we'll see. If it turns out that uh, once we reach Minmus, we can calculate it out and find out that I could have brought this back, then I will... Uh, send another mission at some point because we can land in different locations, dif different biomes on Minmus to do more science. So I can just send another mission to do science at a new location. Uh, anyway, we're pretty close to, oh, uh, parts. We've got a part count issue. But since I've uh, got the solar panels, I can uh, save myself some batteries. So we'll resolve the part count issue like that. And... I think this is probably as good as I need to do for the placement of the solar panels. Yeah, I'll just have to remember to angle it properly. Maybe one on top, just in case I'm... well... Nah, I'll, I'll just go with this. I'll just have to keep my head on straight. Alright, so without further ado, there's no uh, equations ahead of time. We will have to make calculations once we get there. One is the phase angle. Another is the amount of burn time that we have. I need to introduce that calculation. And then uh, time to surface. So uh, we'll do those uh, en route. Alright, so uh, I'm not going to rename this, This is, but this is going to be a Minmus Explorer. And let's take it out to the launch pad. Okay, here we are. And let's throttle up. SAS on and launch. So one thing about Minmus is that its gravity is about a 120th of that of Kerbin. So if you can use a lower power engine on the second stage, that's probably worthwhile. You don't need to be carrying a heavy engine. The LV909 is a relatively heavy engine. It's 0.5 tons. And so a lighter, less powerful engine would be better to land on Minmus. You don't need as powerful an engine. The gravity on the moon is one-sixth of that of uh, Kerbin, just about. We haven't really talked about calculating thrust-to-weight ratio very much, but of course uh, if something has a thrust-to-weight ratio of one on uh, Kerbin, that means it has roughly a thrust-to-weight ratio of six on the moon and twenty on Minmus control with this thing is still a bit iffy because I've only got uh, oh no I don't have the reaction wheel do I ah so I'm using the probe core's own torque that's a problem I forgot to save the uh, remember I added the reaction wheel after I built the craft I had forgotten it initially so now I've only got the probe core's own torque uh, okay, that's that's iffy. But I think I can deal. It'll just mean really, really slow turns all the way through. It might be really tough to... Well, then again, it's Minmus. 
It might be tough to land, but Minmus is a very forgiving moon as far as that's concerned because of the low gravity. So this turn, this pitch maneuver, was a little bit slower than I wanted because I don't have as much torque in the pod, in the probe core. Hopefully it won't jeopardize us too much. Of course we are saving the mass from the reaction wheel, but that was a trivial mass to begin with. Okay, separation. I'm going to thrall down and activate the engine. Let me see what our situation is. Yeah, as expected, our apoapsis is already pretty high. So I'm going to wait until we're closer. Well, I don't know. It's going to take a while to burn with this engine to get into orbit. Doesn't tell me how long I have to apoapsis. Okay, for the sake of the phase angle calculation, I do want to get into a reasonably circular orbit this time. Can't really target Minmus, but at least we can see its altitude there. And remember, we add that altitude number to the radius of Kerbin, so you see 46,400 kilometers, but really that's 47,000 kilometers once you add the radius of Kerbin. That's why it's 46,400, because uh, they've already subtracted the uh, radius of carbon out of that. Now we're going to have a little bit of a trick getting to Minmus and that's because Minmus is inclined about five degrees but we'll deal with that as it comes. The way of uh, fixing inclination with regard to Minmus is basically the same as we did with uh, meeting up with the lost Kerbal in orbit. Fundamentally no big difference. Okay, we're in a roughly circular orbit, uh, 141 by 139. Now if we look at the orbit of Minmus, it's inclined like this, about 5 degrees. and of course from some angles it looks flat but you want to find where it's maximum seems like it's maximum is around around here-ish okay uh, so we seem to be close to where we could adjust our orbit to it Let's see, this is our orbit here. Just sort of line up. You can sort of see where the Minmus line is still. I'm got so from here we have to tilt north. So I'm gonna tilt north. This is not the optimal way to do it, by the way. And you know what, maybe I shouldn't do it this way. I don't know if I have enough delta V for this. Uh, doing the inclination change separate from the burn to Minmus, but I might not have no choice. Yeah, I think I have no choice in this case. I don't think uh, the location where I have to burn to Minmus is going to let me do the inclination change at all. So. I wish the Mimis line didn't fade out like that. Uh, no, I don't like this. I'll take my chances. It looks horrible because uh, if if we were gonna meet Mimis where Mimis is right now, let's say Mimis was over here somewhere, and then we were gonna burn and we gotta meet it up here. That's fine, because that's where its orbit seems to hit like the equator of Kerbin. So right around there is where it'd be great. But we're probably going to meet Minmus over here somewhere, and there's a huge gap between its orbit and the equator of Kerbin and where we are. So that's not good. And here, instead of burning north, I burn south, because we're opposite now. The closer you are to Kerbin, or any source of gravity, the more the inclination change is going to cost. I just 
It's very much against my... Oh, yeah, this is just a horrible thing to do. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. Crud. I burn retrograde instead of burning for inclination. Okay. Well, this is probably going to fail now. Right. Anyway, let's calculate phase angle. So, we've got a phase angle equation here. R1, I'm going to say, is roughly... Uh, well, we're like 740 on this, uh, 737 on this side, and uh, 680, let's say, on that side. So, splitting difference, oh, no, uh, sorry, 740 and uh, 680. So, splitting the difference, it's 710. It probably won't make that much of a difference because Minmus's radius is so far away, it's uh, 47,000. So the tiny difference in our orbit isn't going to make as much of a change as it did for meeting up with uh, the Kerbal. So doing this, uh, let's do the inside of the parentheses first here. So 710 plus 47,000. You can see why it doesn't make much of a difference which orbit we're in. And then that divided by two times the, the orbit of our target. So, divided by uh, 94,000. Okay. 0. 0.5075 first to the 1.5. Then we do 1 minus that. Okay. Okay, and then that times 180. So I get 114.9. I don't know if that's right. It looks okay. It's not a bad number. Of course, everything is like very rough here because I'm just estimating my angles or otherwise trying to use a protractor. But holding up the protractor to the screen isn't exactly the height of accuracy here. I think we're uh, good enough to burn. So right around here, we just turn prograde. And see if we could combine our, our uh, burn to Minmus with the inclination burn we could just tilt a little bit north and if that was going to work out we could have done it here but I don't think this is the right location anyway off we go we're gonna try and hit Minmus now okay as usual we're just trying to get our orbit to touch the target orbit okay now let's see how far off our ah look at that we're pretty far off. Mimus is not going to be able to suck us in like that. Hmm. I think over here I can do more of an inclination burn. Try to fix that. Okay, let's see if I can fix this gap here. Okay, well, that looks relatively in line. Need to burn a little bit prograde now to make up for sort of a mess of our orbit. Okay, now we seem to be hitting Minmus, but I mean, we don't have uh, patch conics or anything like that to work with, so we don't know until we get there. Let's make sure our solar panels are going to remain lit. Okay, well, we've got at least one solar panel facing the sun. 
think this will be pretty consistent. Okay, here we are on the slow part of orbit waiting for Minmus to catch up to us. Let's make sure that the sun is still in an opportune location. Yeah, it is. Come on. Oh yes, 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 yes. Okay, here we go. Minus encounter. God, our, uh, our orbit is very faded. I don't really see our orbit very well. Okay, periapsis pretty high. But we can work with this. We just wait till periapsis. And then we're going to retro burn into orbit. Okay, that's orbit. I don't have too much fuel left, but we'll see. Let's get into a serviceable orbit first. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, and so that part of our contract is fulfilled. Let's do one GUI experiment. Okay, and I will make sure we have the electric charge and transmit that data. Okay, so we fulfilled those two parts, and now we have to try and land, but let's first do some calculations. Total mass is 1.8 tons. Our fuel is, let's bring up calculator, uh, so 22.8. 8 divided by 90, 0.25 tons. That's not much. 9.81. 572 is enough to land on Minmus. Okay, so that's our delta V, 572 conservatively. Okay, now let's talk about burn time. How much time do we have left to burn with this fuel? Well, the... Well, not calculator right now. The equation for that is... Uh, time equals your fuel mass times your ISP times 9.81 because whenever you have ISP you're gonna have 9.81 divided by your thrust and that's it so the higher your thrust the quicker you're going to burn your fuel that's obvious the engine efficiency the higher the efficiency the slower you're gonna burn your fuel also obvious. So uh, this should be a fairly straightforward, easy to remember equation. Um, yep, so we know our fuel mass, roughly speaking, uh, given the buffer, uh, is uh, 0.25 tons. We're measuring in tons, and we got to measure thrust in kilonewtons. If you measure your fuel mass in tons, your thrust has to be measured in kilonewtons, unless you want to do some weird unit conversion thing, which will get you into trouble. Our ISP in vacuum is 390, and then we do times 9.81, and then our thrust is 50. So, let's bring up calculator. So how much time do I have left on this fuel? And then divide by 50. Okay, 19 seconds. <laughs> 19 seconds at full power, right? At full power. So if you only do half thrust, that means 25, well, then you're going to double your time. It's just like that. So, so yeah. So in theory, if you were 19 seconds away from touchdown, you could uh, start your burn. And of course, we know we have more than enough to do. So 19 seconds is more than enough time to slow down enough to touch down. All right, I think I'm just going to go for it without uh, trying to calculate the optimal descent height or anything like that. So the rotation of Min Minmus has sort of brought us over a bit, so that's helpful. We've got pretty high acceleration right now. We've got an engine with 50 kilonewtons of thrust, and we've only got a mass of like 1.8 tons or less than that now. So this is way overpowered for Minmus. 
I'm just gonna kill the horizontal part first. Mimus has such a hard time bringing us down anyway, I don't want to get rid of the vertical velocity. Okay, we are now on final descent. Oh, uh, I don't like where we're landing, actually. It looks like we're landing on a slope here. Let me... No, the other way. Let me burn a little bit this way. Okay, here we go, running out of fuel, coming close to the surface. Okay, we are on the surface of Minmus. As demonstrated, uh, even though I made a mistake at some point uh, in orbit around Kerbin in terms of uh, trying to fix inclination and burning retrograde accidentally instead, the, the delta V to land on Minmus is uh, actually a little bit less than that to land on the moon. So even though Minmus is further out because of its low gravity, it's, it's easier. So let's observe the materials bay. Let's transmit the science. While the material samples are processed, you begin, began to turn your thoughts on how much Minmus looks like a mint dessert and have discovered that you are now hungry. profound insight into science there. Okay, and the mystery goo. You observed the goo. Well, they really need to come up with a uh, larger variety of blurbs on that stuff, especially now that we have a lot more biomes. Okay, so uh, that is the mission to Minmus concluded. All right, let's go back to the Space Center. Okay, with the end of that mission, uh, we have 477,000 funds and 88.8 .8 science, which means that we're just shy of um, being able to unlock a science that costs 90. I think I'm, I'm looking at this contract to test uh, LV-1 engine in a suborbital trajectory over Kerbin. Seems like a straightforward thing to do. And it'll give us 36 science, uh, plenty of funds, so I'm going to pick that up and let's just quickly do that alright I think this should be adequate for this particular suborbital test uh, we've got the engine in question right at the top there uh, could have put it elsewhere but why not just make it prominent and the reaction wheels here I've tried to smooth out the lines using the parachutes even though uh, it's sort of obvious that we've got this weird thing on top but, uh, yep, yeah, I think this should be able to get up to the right altitude. We've got a very high-powered engine, though we need it because the mass is 8.4 tons, uh, just to be on the safe side. And, you know, we had the uh, girder segments and then the whole uh, landing strut thing going on here. All right, so this will be the LV-1 test. And let's give it a go. Okay, everything looks, well, not everything. Uh, everything except for staging looks right and proper. So let's fix staging. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, not again. Come on. Ah, uh, oh, that hurt this time. Really? Ah, uh, whatever. Let's collect this as well. All right. Uh, okay, well. Let's lock suspension on the struts. Beats me sometimes. What's up with these struts? And I guess I, I remember... No. Um, oh, we can't do action groups, huh? Uh, that's something we have to unlock. I'd action group the suspension, but I guess we can't do that. Alright, let's fix staging here while we're at it and then we'll bring it back out to the launch pad. So for those keeping track, launching missions to Minmus, easy. Keeping your rocket steady on the launch pad, hard. All right, here we go. 
Uh, come on, gear up. We do not need to be going this fast. Around there ish, should we find? Okay, what is our apoapsis? It's getting there. Let's head up to the upper end of the altitude range. Well, that's way past it already. Now, if I recall, it said that we have to do run test option in the parts context menu. So at the right time, we're going to do this run test thing. So it's not just staging. Okay, here we go, run test. All right, and I don't need to worry about that one anymore. We just need to head back down now. Looks like we could do to head east a bit. So I'm gonna... Actually, gotta be even more forceful about it. Okay, re-entry heat. Parachutes. Gear down. Well, we seem to be in the KSC territory at least. Alright, full parachute deployment. Didn't get the sound effect. Gotta have SAS on now. 5.2 meters per second should be safe, but I'll still use some thrust to slow us down a bit. Okay, all nice and safe it looks like. Let's recover vessel. Alright, so that was a success, and we got what percentage? 97.9% .9 back. Alright, let's take a look at the tech tree quickly, and that'll be that. So, this is the state of our tech tree, and... Maybe we should flesh out this area right now. I think if we're going to continue doing stuff with 18 ton limit, we need fuel lines, and that's around here somewhere. So let's research this. Hmm. Not in this tier, though. I'll have to look up again where exactly fuel lines are. Radial decouplers aren't useful without the fuel lines. Unless we could transfer fuel manually. Could do planes. Uh, let me reserve uh, 90 signs so that we can decide which of these to unlock next. Alright, but uh, with that, I think uh, I'll pause here. I won't decide on what contracts to do next time. We'll take care of that at the beginning of the next episode, so a little bit of suspense. Uh, but uh, there we are. Uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.